hey y'all so I just want to be transparent with you guys because I know you're like wait a minute the video just started this girl's already in tears I want to be transparent with you guys because that is important to me on my channel um, that you know I just be honest and I be real um, I've said this in videos before but I just don't I'm not interested in being one of those content creators who always has it together who's always happy and stuff like that because I'm not um, this is real life um, this is my life um, but that being said I am going through something right now <laughs> It is me, Karina Lee, and I am back at it again with another video. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Karina. If you're not new, welcome back. Thank you so much for supporting. In today's video, I want to go over some things that God just revealed to me during one of my Bible sessions. Um, we're going to be in the book of Psalms, so if that's something that you're interested in, definitely keep watching do not forget to like comment and subscribe and let's get into it the last day of august on the very last day of august the verse of the day was psalms 34 18 and so what i did was i read the entire chapter and i really wanted to just talk with you guys about something that really touched my heart for those of you who may be struggling for those of you who may be you know going through something specific this chapter but also this verse really freed me and i felt like i really wanted to share this word as well so let's just go ahead and hop into it so psalms 34 18 reads the lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit who that in itself is already something you know what i mean um the lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit I don't know about you guys, but when I am brokenhearted for whatever reason and crushed in spirit, I tend to kind of isolate myself. Um, I don't really, I don't feel, you know, I don't want to be social, you know what I mean? So for me, at those times, I feel like I'm just not interested in being around friends. I don't really want to be around family per se. Um... I just isolate myself, you know, because I'm hurting. If you're someone who, you know, reverts from people when you're when you're in pain, when you're hurting, when you're going through hard times, if you're someone who doesn't really like to be around other people and like, or you don't like to ask for help or um, you feel like nobody understands or anything like that, um, if you're one of those people, then I feel like this scripture can really speak to you because it's literally saying the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit and I feel like when you think that nobody else is there when you think that nobody else understands or you think that nobody else has your heart you can always depend on the Lord you can always depend on God to be there sometimes when you're in these states and you don't want people around and stuff people will respect how you feel and they just won't bother you they won't contact you or sometimes people don't reach out to you anyway if you're one of those people who may feel like you know people don't show up for me anyway or people don't reach out to me people don't see if I'm doing okay and things like that God is always gonna be there always going to want to talk to you he's always gonna want to hear from you he's always gonna show up for you so I think that that is just something that is so um so great and such a blessing you know what I mean it's such a blessing to know that the Lord is never gonna leave your side he's never gonna abandon you he's never gonna give up on you and when you're broken hearted and when you are crushed in spirit God's near he's close he's there he's ready to support you to wipe your tears to just be that present help this passage reminds me through every life experience, God is there. He wants to help us. He wants to provide for our needs. He wants us to come to him with all the things, the good, the bad, the ugly, the in-between. He wants us to come to him with all of it. God provides, protects, covers, heals, guides, and he redeems. There's nothing that God can't do. And I feel like that was something that was really prevalent in this um in this verse but i do want to tell you guys the main takeaways that i got from this and obviously i'm gonna have some scripture to go with it um but my first main takeaway is 
praise God loud and publicly always. And that's, I got that from Psalms 34, 1, which says, I will exalt the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I know that it can be hard to praise God when you feel like life isn't fair, when you feel like he's not there, when you feel like he didn't show up, when you feel like he didn't protect you, when you feel like he didn't cover you, when you feel like, why would you, you know, there are times in life where it's like, God, why would you let this happen? Why would you let me go through this? Why would you let me experience this? And I think that in those times, it's so important to still praise God, to still you know glorify him and magnify him because if you truly 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 believe in God if you truly want to do this walk with him um then you have to find comfort in understanding that it's God's will not ours you know what I mean and I think that when things don't go our way um or when when things are painful when we don't get what we want um, a lot of times it's easy to be upset with God, to feel like God didn't come through or God didn't, you know, do what he said he was going to do and stuff like that. And it's ironic because I was having a conversation with my cousin last week and she was asking my perspective on the fact that she was watching something and basically the guy said, you know, that God, he doesn't give us what he wants. It's only what he wants. And I was telling her from my perspective, I don't think that's true. I think that a lot of times God does give us what we want or die, or God does let us have what we want. He lets us go the path that we want to go on. Um, and that is how we end up hurt. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's not always what God wants. Sometimes you know exactly what you are not supposed to be doing and you do it anyway. Or sometimes maybe you thought that it was God or maybe you thought, you know, that it was the right thing to do. Either way, I believe that God does let us have what we want. I believe that God does let us, you know, do things that we are not, that aren't in his will. I think he does do that and I think that he still covers us and he still protects us and those times that he doesn't it's almost like you live in a house and you know there are rules you know there are rules and you know there are boundaries that you do not cross when you cross those boundaries or when you break those rules you get in trouble period I feel like it's the same way with God we know there are rules we know there are boundaries and we know there are things that we shouldn't cross and I think when we cross those things that's when we are outside of the realm of protection and God still comes through for us even when we are outside of his will even when we are being disobedient even when we are prioritizing our our will or you know other things over him he still shows up for us he still protects us he still loves us he still guides us God never gives up on us and I think that is a blessing that we take for granted like God never gives up on us there is no one like him there is nobody with the characteristics of God there is nobody who is going to love you unconditionally through thick and through thin there's nobody who's gonna let you talk to them and say oh I know I need to do this or I know I need to do that and then you admit to what you know you need to be doing and then you don't do it and they're still there for you and they still cover you they still love you they still protect you there's nobody with character as impeccable and as all you know like there's nobody who can have you in awe as much as god can another takeaway that i got is remember that your love and glory for god can free or help someone else and i got that from psalms 34 2 through 3 which reads i will glory in the lord let the afflicted hear and rejoice glorify the lord with me let us exalt his name together afflicted is to cause pain or suffering to affect or trouble so it literally is basically saying you know i will glorify the lord and let those who are troubled who are in pain who are suffering let them hear me glorifying the lord it's literally saying like glorify god with me like glorify the lord with me let us exalt his name together and i think that it's important to note that your love for God, your glorifying God, your your obedience can save someone else's life. You never know. You never know how your relationship with God and your prayers can save someone else, can help someone else. You never know how your obedience, when God tells you to do something, you never know how it can be saving someone else or help someone else. Another takeaway. God will answer when you seek him. 
maybe you don't feel like it's right in that moment exactly when you ask for him but he will answer you and I got that from Psalms 34 4 which reads I sought the Lord and he answered me he delivered me from all my fears a lot of times we can be very impatient another situation I was just speaking with my friend a couple of days ago and she was literally talking about how she wants to leave more room to hear from God because after she does her prayer after she does her Bible study and her time with the Lord she'll just get on her phone and like start scrolling on social media and stuff like that and she's like she feels like God's like dang like you got time to talk but you didn't give me any time to talk I think that's so real for us where sometimes we feel like we can't hear from the Lord we feel like God's not answering we feel like he's not showing up but we haven't given him any room any time or any space to do those things how can you hear from God if you're always listening to music you're always with people you're always watching TV you're always on YouTube if you're always filling your time with something if you're never in silence if you're never just sitting with your thoughts or just meditating or anything of that nature at what point did you give time if, at what point did you give God any time to talk to you to tell you what he thinks to tell you what he wants for you to do like there has to be a point in time where you just sit still and you wait and I think that a lot of us are impatient and that's how we end up in situations because we think we heard God or we or we did or we didn't hear him and we feel like we're just gonna do it on our own we're just gonna figure it out you have to give God time to talk to you, to speak to you, the same way that you would give your mom time or your dad time, your sister time, your brother time, your friend time to respond when you're having a conversation with them is the same way that you have to give God that time. So this next one really freed me and this is honestly the reason that I wanted to do the video. Um, so another main takeaway that I got from Psalms 34 was when you seek God in everything you do, you shouldn't feel shame. Despite what your circumstances are or how you got there, when you give it all to God, he will save you from your troubles. And I got that from Psalms 34, 5 through 6, which reads, Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him of all his troubles. And let me tell y'all why that really freed me. And I hope that it frees someone else. There are times in life. Ooh, Jesus. There are times in life where we find ourselves in situations that we didn't expect to be in that we didn't want to be in. Maybe you're not where you want to be in life. Maybe the relationship that you wanted so badly didn't work out. Maybe you're running from something in your past. Maybe someone warned you about something and you didn't listen. Um, whatever the case may be, there are times where we end up in situations and we feel shame for whatever reason. You know, we, we want to hide or we don't want to tell anybody because we feel ashamed we don't want them to know we feel like you know um it's better off if we just suffer in silence or we suffer by ourselves and i think that this word was a way of god wanting us to know that you don't have to be ashamed of what you're going through what you went through um anything that you're experiencing is a part of your testimony I think shame is dangerous. Shame is how you suffer in silence. Shame is how you isolate yourself. Shame is how you push the people who love you, who care about you, who want to support you away. And it's just not the best course. There's no reason to have shame when you seek God in everything you do. We're human. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to fall short. Um... We are going to make bad decisions knowingly and unknowingly. And at the end of the day, if you have a true desire to live for God, to seek God, to grow with God, then that's okay. 
we get so wrapped up in shoulda, coulda, woulda. We get so wrapped up in, oh, what are they going to say? What are they going to think? How are they going to feel? That we allow shame to take over. When at the end of the day, mistakes are going to happen. This is life. Nobody's perfect. Everybody has a past. Everybody has something that they wish they didn't do. Everybody has made a bad decision or a wrong turn. And there is no way to grow in life if you're not put into uncomfortable decisions. I mean, uncomfortable situations. Or if you're not put into situations where, you know, you should have made a better choice. I think that those experiences allow you to grow and to evolve and to learn and to understand in future situations, okay, I already been through this or I already made this decision. Let me not do that again because I saw the outcome that it had for me. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, when you seek God, mistakes are going to happen. And at the end of the day, God is still going to be there. He's still going to show up for you. I just don't think that it's talked about enough how hard it is to kill your flesh every single day. How hard it is to walk with God. You know what I mean? It's not easy. It's not a walk through the park. It's not always rainbows and sunshine. And one thing that I always ask God is like, empty me of me, God, and fill me more with you. So in order for him to do that, that means that anything that he doesn't like that I currently am doing or ways that I'm acting or anything of that nature, I want him to empty me of that and fill me more up with him. Um, so obviously there are going to be situations where God shows me, oh, this is, a, this is something that you need to work on. This is something that's not of me. This is something that is not what a child of God would do. Um, and we're all going to have those experiences. And I want you guys to know that every day isn't going to be easy. Every day isn't going to be fun. Every day isn't going to be exciting. You're not always going to want to do the work. You're not always going to want to walk with God. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just going to be the one to say it and be real. Like, it's not always fun. Because we're human. You know what I mean? And we're killing our flesh because... We want to live for God. So at the end of the day, I want you to know that you shouldn't be ashamed because whatever you've done, whatever you've experienced, you have overcome it. And if you haven't overcome it yet, then let me tell you something else. Another takeaway. In God, you can and should find safe haven, shelter, comfort, protection. You will be blessed in God's house. And that's Psalms 34, 8, which reads, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. <sighs> so like I said, the actual verse of the day was Psalms 34, 18. And it reads once again, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. And what I got from that was, when you're brokenhearted and your spirit is troubled, God hears your cries and he sees your pain. He has not left you to deal with the pain alone. And that's so important to remember, you're not alone. If you sometimes you feel alone, sometimes you feel like nobody understands, sometimes you feel like nobody's there for you, sometimes you feel like no one wants to show up, no one wants to have your back, and God is there. He hasn't left you alone, even if you may feel that way. He's there. Everything happens for a reason, and everything is working together for your good. I believe that the things that don't work out for you do work out for you. My last and final takeaway is something that I honestly already expressed, but I just want to close it out with this. Um, just to remind you guys to stay hopeful, to stay on this journey, to be consistent, to talk to God, and also to find a community of people who understand, you know, what it's like to walk with God, excuse me, and um, and who you can you can lean on for support on days where you don't want to do it, on days where you feel like God didn't show up. You know, there are a lot of questions, especially when you're new in your faith, when you're new in reading the Bible and stuff like that. There are a lot of things that's like, mm, questionable or how to, like sometimes you want to know what somebody else's perspective was or what they got from it or anything like that. Um, so it's really, really, really important that, you know, you get in community with people who are like-minded, who are on the same path as you. But my final takeaway is living for God does not guarantee you a life free of pain, sorrow, and broken moments. 
It guarantees with God you will overcome those times. You will not fight those battles alone. Even when you feel broken, God only sees you as bruised. So in all things, trust, seek, and rely on God because he will rescue you. And I got that from Psalms 34, 19 through 22, which reads, The righteous people may have many troubles, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones. Not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked. The foes of your righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. So, with that being said, this is the end of the video. Um, I do sort of want to apologize for all of the crying, but I also, I mean, dang, this is like the second or third video. Somehow, when I'm talking about God, I always end up in tears. So, you know, that's just my story. Somehow, I'm always in tears. Um, I didn't mean to cry most of this video, but I think that, like I said, transparency is really important to me on my channel. Um, and I feel like it's important that I show real emotion. I don't want to wait until I have it all together to deliver a message that I feel is really, really, really important. So I really, really, really hope that this message blessed you in some way, shape, or form. Whatever message you got from this, I really hope that you just take it and internalize it. And I pray that you also talk to God about it. Um, I just want to be a vessel for God. I just want to be obedient. And I just want to show up as the best version of me. And I know in order to do that, I have to go through trials and tribulations and I have to learn you know what I mean and things of that nature and I know that through it all God's with me every step of the way and I hope that you know that through it all God is with you every step of the way he supports you he loves you he cares about you and he has not forgotten about you or forsaken you or or left you you know what I mean so yeah <sighs> um with that being said, this is the end of the video. I really, really, really hope you guys got something from it. Um, I pray that this blesses you and I pray that this touches you and I pray that this reaches who it's supposed to reach. Um, as always, I thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely check out some of my other videos. You might like those as well. You probably will. If you do, definitely subscribe to my channel. Turn on that bell notification so you're notified every Free time and post another video as always i thank you guys so much for watching and i will catch you in the next one bye guys